I guess really the, I mean, I guess really if you're looking at these things, what what would you estimate just on percentages if we did this cup experiment? You you can't calculate it and say this is a one in three, this is a one in three because there's three outcomes. Because you're as yet you need to go with the assumption that they're equally likely, and I think you can probably see those are not going to be equally likely if you dropped a cup on the ground, right? Which one do you think is most likely to happen? Depending on the cup and how slanted it is, right, the side is probably the most likely. I think when they did it, this is usually, you know, 50 or 60 percent or something like that. Which one is the next most likely, you think? The first one, yeah. They, this might come up 20 or 30 percent. I don't know. This might be 70, actually, now that I think about it. When they do it, I'm trying to remember. It might be like 70, 20, 10 or something like that. It does land like that sometimes. But the only way you can do that is experimentally. Unless you did some kind of crazy mathematics and, and physics and do you know somehow come up with a theoretical argument, <coughs> we're going to go from the idea that uh, we're working with equally likely outcomes. Oops, I skipped one thing there. If you're asked this uh, card question here, suppose one card's drawn from a deck of 52, just to uh, make it easy for you here, here's a sample space for if you draw one card. A sample space, the word sample space is, is, means some kind of way of showing all the outcomes for an experiment, for, a, for a, something that you do. The word experiment in probability is different than the word experiment in, uh, in science. Well, it's, it's sort of related, but you're, you're going to you know, set out something and, and do it and see what happens, I guess. So in that way, it's the same. But um, if you draw one of these cards, here's the sample space. There are 52 things that can happen. 52 cards you can get. If you're looking for getting a face card, I'm going to use the letter F to represent face card. So probability of getting a face card is, there are 12 of them, right? Absolutely. 12 face cards. If you wanted, you could reduce that this down to 3 out of 13. I don't care if you reduce it in this unit or not, fractions. If you want to reduce them, you can. In some ways, there's, it's nice to not reduce them because this number has meaning here. It's all the cards. It's how many cards there are, and that's how many face cards there are. This number actually also has meaning. This is how many cards there are in one suit, right? There's one suit there. There's 13 cards, and uh, these are the face cards, those three right there, right? Or you could look at the whole thing. There's 52, and those are the face cards there, right? Uh, a red ace. You can count them here. Uh, probability of red ace is there are 52 cards. And how many of them are there? There's two, right? Where are they? They're right here. Those are the two red aces. Two out of 52 or one out of 26. The two has problems. One out of 26. Okay, whether you reduce it or not, each of those numbers have meaning in that situation. The first thing we're doing is just counting outcomes, okay? This, this tutorial is called Experimental and Theor Theoretical Probability, but we're just counting outcomes, whether we determine them theoretically or whether we count them experimentally. Our focus is going to be on theoretical probability. But this first tutorial, all we're doing is counting outcomes. It follows from, and we're not even using combinatorics yet. We're counting them kind of the the old way here, the old-fashioned way, the long way. Sometimes you can show uh, the sample space for something with a kind of a table like this. Sometimes you can show it with a just a list, right? A mental kind of, a mental list here. Up here it was, you know, you know the six outcomes. You don't even have to write them out, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's all the outcomes. Sometimes it's not easy to see what the outcomes are. Sorry, I skipped over this. This is this basic probability formula that I told you about. It always looks more complicated when you put it in terms of uh, symbols like that. This is the total number of outcomes. Total number of outcomes. If you didn't write down this formula before, you should probably write it down now. And on the top is number of favorable outcomes. I would just remember it as favorable over total. Probability of some event, A. They're using A here. 
if there's n equally likely outcomes in total, and then r of them are favorable to event A. So let's look at this situation here, because this one's not so obvious, because uh, we're going to look at uh, what's the chance that a family that has three kids, there are exactly two girls. Remember why the word exactly is in there. What? Why, well, yeah, what? It doesn't mean because you might have 2.3 girls. That's not what it means, okay? It means mathematicians use this to avoid any confusion. If you just say, you know, like if someone asked me, oh, do you have two girls? I would say, no, I have three girls. But mathematically, do you have two girls? I guess I have to say yes, right? I have three, but that means I have two, doesn't it? Isn't that true, right? So in mathematics, you need to put that word exactly to say excluding the other cases, right? Exactly two means two and only two. I know it sounds kind of goofy, right? You don't uh, you don't talk like that in everyday language. Could I have exactly one glass of pop, please? No, you just say, could I have a, right? Someone gives you seven of them. They give you one as well, okay? If you want to, if you want to figure this out now, what's the chance that uh, that you have exactly two girls? We have to make a big assumption here. What's our assumption need to be if we're going to figure this out? Here's our assumption. Our assumption is, um, yeah, the probability of having a girl is equal to probability of having a boy, right? We're assuming they're equally likely. Is that true? Do you know if that's true? Whoops. Do you know the? How could we check whether that's true? Because we can't calculate that, right? But how could you check whether that's true? Yeah, you could look at it experimentally, right? You, if you look at all the births that happen, look at the numbers, right? Because if you look at a large enough number, you're assuming that it's going to get close to the real answer. I think if you look at that, it's actually not true. They're not equal. Which one do you think? Which one do you think's higher? There are more women in the world, but that does not mean that more women are born. Actually, I think there are more there are more males born. I think if you look at this, apparently the pop the don't don't get all sidetracked now. I think if you look at this, chance of a boy being born is about fifty two percent or something like that, which means uh, women are females are forty eight percent. That I think this is. Uh, I think that. I just hang on. Let me finish here, okay? <laughs> I realize that you know you guys aren't letting me explain this here. I think this is this is probably uh, on an evolutionary uh, way of if uh, <laughs> there are more uh, males born, but males are a lot more likely to do stupid things and die, right? Which is which is true, right? If you want to have an equal number in the end, right? Males do stupid things more often and they die, so you need to have more males born so that eventually it kind of evens out, right? And then, of course, women live longer, so eventually, right? It starts out where there's more males. At some point at the critical time, it's equal, and then it goes the other way. I think uh, you could you could probably re you know research this and find out that that's you know if if that's the best thing for the species that that's that's what the evolutionary pressure is going to be is to have uh, is to have more males born all right um, for this we're going to assume that they're equally likely okay because on a on a small scale like this we're going to assume it's equally likely if you want to know you can look at the uh, you can make it you can I want you to first of all realize that it probably helps to draw the sample space for this. Because if I, I think for some of you, if you think, can we, uh, can we kind of refocus here? I know that's really exciting talking about that, but can we uh, refocus here, please? Yeah, you're done. Yeah. Well, not just you, but um, can you write the sample space? Make a list of what the possibilities are here. That's. I'm going to stop while you're making this list. Can you make a list of what the possibilities are? Somehow show me the sample space for this situation. Oh, look, there's a little thought over here. <laughs> 